Wall Street's top space analyst Morgan Stanley's Adam Jonas telling us yesterday that markets underestimate national security interests in space technology. And just today, Rocket Lab, which competes with SpaceX and Blue Origin for a slice of the space business, although in a very different part of the space business, unveiled its first launch site in the U.S. I had a chance to speak exclusively with CEO Peter Beck earlier. Take a listen. It's been an amazing year. We've flown six times this year, and we're, we're now the fourth most frequently flown launch vehicle in the world. Um, we've delivered 47 spacecraft to orbit, and as you pointed out, uh, the last mission was, was really important. We, we both flew a, a new autonomous flight termination system, but also um, had a really wonderfully successful test of our first stage recovery. So we re-entered the first stage all the way uh, down to splashdown, which is, um, which is really the hard bit and, and a great milestone. So I'm incredibly proud of the team. Why the shift to reusability? Really, for us, it's it's not uh, it's not so much about um, uh, about changing the you know the cost objectives. It's it's really about increasing launch frequency. So reusability it gives us the, the ability to basically double production. If we can get it back once, then we can essentially double production, which is really the constraining thing for us right now. It's pretty incredible to hear you talk about that, given the fact that you're producing rockets, what, uh, one every 20 days or so, which is a pretty fast pace, uh, I think, for the industry in general. How does that speak to your launch manifest and, and how many customers you have signed up? Yeah, well, I mean, we're, we're certainly very busy, and, and this has been a long-awaited capability. Um, you know, small satellites have had to live with kind of the, the you know, uncertainty and, and, you know, not all the, the, the great things that, that Rideshare has to offer. So, um, you know, no longer do you have to kind of be the second class citizen on a very large launch vehicle. Um, you can get your own bespoke orbit on your own timeline. Uh, so it's really, uh, it's really a new shift for the industry. I want to dig into that a little bit more because there's so much competition, or I guess maybe I should say prospective competition when it comes to small uh, launch right now. And mm. certainly we've seen some companies already try and fail. And then you have seen some of the big, more established uh, names like SpaceX now announcing their own rideshare programs, how are you thinking about competition and how do you maintain the lead? Yeah, I think um, I think we, we look at competition as, um, look, it, it's incredibly difficult to get onto orbit um, and then once you get to orbit, uh, it's, it's equally as difficult to, um, you know, to ramp production up to a regular cadence. So uh, there's certainly a lot of emerging competition there um, and we'll, we'll, we'll wait to see how that, uh, that establishes itself. But um, you know the market is uh, the market is certainly very busy, and there's lots of opportunities. So um, you know we're 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 really trying to solve a, a you know a problem that's been ex there for a while um, as quickly as we can. Now you mentioned you're working with the Air Force, and that's a, a relationship that will expand today. Um, given the fact that the National Defense Authorization Act is making its way through Congress now, and it's going to finally stand up a space force. How big of a deal is that? How much of a game changer could that be, not only for Rocket Lab, but also just for the sector as a whole? Yeah, I think it's I think it's important for the nation, and um, you know what we're trying to do here at Rocket Lab is you know provide really responsive launch. Um, so you know the whole point of this this LC2 complex is to be able to literally have launch on demand. So everything we've done here is to enable um, really really rapid call up for launch to you know address um, concerns at at a, at a rapid pace, that, which has been, kind of been the holy grail for a very long time. So of course, sitting down, or I guess talking to remotely, Peter Beck, the CEO of Rocket Lab, as the company unveils its second launch site, its first in the U.S. at Wallops Island in Virginia, just earlier today. Uh, the way Beck kind of he kind of jokes about it that he's the non-billionaire that has created a space company that has now gone to orbit. They've done 10 missions, uh, successful missions, and this is a company that has been backed by venture capital. Raised $288 million in funding from the likes of Coastal Ventures, Bessemer, Greenspring, Promise Ventures, uh, among others. And I asked him if he has more plans for more funding uh, in the near term. He said they don't have any immediate needs for capital, but they did announce as well this year a spacecraft program, their Photon spacecraft line, and kind of leaving the door open that as development of that plays out in 2020, uh, that may shift. I also asked him if he's thinking about an IPO, what that plan could entail. Um, not really answering that question, basically saying, again, they don't have the need for capital right now. They're well capitalized, but that uh, they'll see what happens as they continue to fulfill these programs and work on all of these 
new hardware initiatives and uh, take so it weird. from there. But I associate space with marijuana. Just because okay. I mean, there's some kind of government dependence, what are regulators going to do kind of thing. And I, wonder, sure. I wonder about uh, valuations on these things, because that seems to have been uh, a problem that investors had with so many of these POC stocks. How much is it really worth? Even if it's promising longer term, how much should you pay for it now? Are they similar or no? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say no because because <laughs> cannabis is a, it's commodity right and yes it's heavily heavily regulated but I think in the case of commercial space um, certainly they're building out this launch site at Wallops Island uh, you know one in relationship to NASA they just announced uh, their first customer from that launch site is going to be the Air Force so there's that relationship but. There's so much private money going into development of these space capabilities, and it's not something that the government is necessarily regulating in the same way as cannabis.